This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Big EV news for Jeep today. It says it will have 4xE, or plug-in hybrid versions, of all of its models by 2025, and it will have a fully electric lineup by 2030, which includes Europe. Its first all-new BEV model will be a small crossover for Europe called the Avenger that launches early next year. Its styling is similar to the Compass, but it's actually smaller than a Renegade. Jeep is targeting a 400-kilometer or roughly 250-mile range, and the Avenger will be built at Stellantis' plant in Poland. And while the Avenger will be offered in other markets like Japan and South Korea, it will not be offered in the U.S. because Jeep says the segment for a vehicle like this doesn't exist in the U.S. But the midsize segment is growing in the U.S., and that's where Jeep will enter the EV market in America. One of those vehicles is the Recon, a four-door SUV that takes inspiration from the Wrangler, like its removable doors and roof panels. The same design group that handles the Wrangler also designed the Recon, but even though there are similarities, Jeep insists it's not an EV replacement for the Wrangler. Around the same time, Jeep will expand its Wagoneer lineup with a BEV that is currently codenamed Wagoneer S. And like the Recon, it's a midsize, not a full size. The Wagoneer S will have an estimated 400 mile or 640 kilometer range, 600 horsepower for more than one electric motor, and it will be able to do zero to 60 in around three and a half seconds. Both the Recon and Wagoneer S will be made in North America and production is scheduled to kick off in 2024. Jeep has more than doubled its sales in the last 10 years, and all of these new BEVs announced are new categories for the brand, not just nameplates that it's converted to electric. So we expect its sales growth to continue. And speaking of new EVs, Ford revealed details about the e-transit custom van for Europe. It comes exclusively with a 400 volt, 74 kilowatt hour battery pack that uses the same pouch cells as the F-150 Lightning. Depending on the setup, the E-Transit Custom will be able to go up to 380 kilometers or 236 miles on a single charge. Those setups include multiple body styles, wheelbases, and the choice of either a 100 kilowatt or 160 kilowatt electric motor. The more powerful version allows owners to tow up to 2,000 kilograms or carry a payload of 1,100. Production of the E-Transit Custom starts in Turkey in autumn of 2023. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Renault is taking a unique approach to big commercial trucks that are at the end of their life. Rather than sending them to the crusher, it's recycling the trucks and reusing their spare parts. It created a dedicated plant where old trucks will be dismantled and the good parts will be identified. Bad parts will be recycled while the good ones are cleaned and are sent back to the spare parts store to be sold. Renault says the parts are covered by a manufacturer's warranty and will cost 50 to 60% less than new parts. The BMW Group is going vegan. Starting next year, fully vegan interiors will be offered in both BMW and mini vehicles. The company already offers fabric alternatives to leather, but it says it developed a new bio-based material for steering wheels 
that meets its criteria for appearance, wear resistance, and durability. BMW says the new material reduces CO2e emissions by up to 85% along the value chain compared to leather. The supplier Magna announced it's partnering with Cartken, an autonomous robot company based in San Francisco, to manufacture its Model C delivery pod. Magna is building the autonomous robot at its factory in Michigan, and in the future, it will produce more models built on the same platform for different use cases. The Model C is currently being used for last mile use to deliver items in malls, hotels, universities, and warehouses. Nissan LEAF owners in the U.S. can now send energy back to the grid when plugging in their vehicle. The automaker just approved its first bi-directional charger for use with the LEAF. The charger was developed by vehicle-to-grid service provider for Mata Energy. Now owners can plug in and charge their vehicle or send energy stored in the battery back to their building or to the grid. Nissan didn't reveal how much the charger costs, but did say it won't impact the Leafs battery warranty. There are a few key reasons to start a business in Michigan. First of all, it's the talent. Second, Michigan is wired for winning. Third, the ecosystem here is really focused on supporting businesses in the market. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. RoboTire is a startup in Plymouth, Michigan that's developing robots for tire changes. The robots can also mount tires on wheels and balance them too. In fact, RoboTire claims its robots can mount, balance, and install four tires in 25 minutes. That's faster than most techs. And the robots can do it all day long. They can easily lift the 150 pound tires that come off a Hummer H1 and the company is also developing a system for semi-trucks too. Though RoboTire would not tell us what the system costs, it says it's affordable for small independent repair shops. The company is working with the discount tire retail chain and says it has a solid book of back orders. RoboTire says this will help tire stores that have a hard time finding techs to do this type of work and free up the techs they do have to do other work. As we've reported, General Motors plans to import some of its higher-end models to China that it currently doesn't sell there. And now we have more details about its plans. It will be a direct-to-consumer sales channel aimed at luxury buyers called Durant Guild, named after the company's founder, William Durant. It will host invitation-only events and open experience centers in urban areas. GM didn't say exactly which vehicles it plans to make available, but it's putting the GMC Hummer EV and Yukon and Chevrolet Tahoe, Silverado, and Corvette on display at upcoming events. The company acknowledges it won't sell vehicles in large volumes with the new platform, but it hopes it will generate excitement around its other brands in China, which have seen sales drop by a third over the past five years. Are legacy automakers starting to make inroads in the EV segment? That's going to be the topic on today's AutoLine After Hours. Doug Betts, the president of automotive at J.D. Power, will be on the show. He says buyer consideration for EVs from legacy automakers is going up fast. How fast and how much? We want to know. And we invite you to join us this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on our website or YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Experience Dolby Atmos, anywhere, anytime. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. 
Scheffler, We Pioneer Motion, and by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation.